Ding dong, open the door. <laughs> it's me, Jay Groper, wow. Wow, what a funny, excellent, regular joke. But you know, I bet you're thinking, I've heard regular jokes. Tell me dadjokes.com, which is a cringy dong, according to Hannah. I love dad jokes. Those are something you can do online now, guys. Dongs, not jokes. Genes to Cognition Online features an interactive network map of cognitive disorders, cognitive processes, and research approaches. Cognitive disorders can be caused for a number of reasons, including genes, head injuries, or brain tumors, to name a few. Knowing someone that suffers from such a disorder can be particularly distressing when they appear to be completely fine on the outside. Alzheimer's is one of these diseases in which the person afflicted can often appear physically normal. If we select Alzheimer's disease, we can see all the different color-coded elements that can contribute to it. The biochemistry of this disease is thought to be one of the most important elements, yet the least understood, so let's take a look. There are videos and blurbs about it. This specific one explains that a lack of serotonin, a characteristic of Alzheimer's, contributes to acts of aggression and impulsivity. It is a neurodegenerative disease, meaning it's characterized by the degeneration and death of neurons. But to see how a healthy neural circuit functions, check out Virtual Neurons. The goal of this game is to construct a neural circuit that carries a message from skin cells to muscle. Once you construct it, you can explore. Zoom in and click where the circles overlap to see a pop-up animation of synaptic transmission. This gap between the neurons is the synaptic cleft. In reality, it's quite a bit smaller than depicted here at only 20 to 40 nanometers wide. To put things in perspective, a human hair is no less than 80,000 nanometers wide. When this neuron is excited by an electrical signal called an action potential, these vesicles release chemicals called neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters then react with the receptors on this neuron, which in turn can increase the chance that the neuron will fire an action potential and carry on to the next cell. Go back to the simulation to see this at work as this nail stabs the skin. And since it's no skin off your back to go to inner animal, you might as well. When this person person walks up, you can move the slider to see it in its entirety. Click on one of the glowing orbs to learn about the specific body part and how it evolved from our ancestors. This specific video explains why it hurts so much to land on your tailbone, because that is where our tail would have been. There isn't much fat or muscle to cover it up, so it hurts. When you think of evolution, you might mostly picture our ape-like ancestors, but what about fish? An early human embryo looks very similar to that of mammals, birds, and amphibians, all of which descended from fish. As it grows and changes, these features form into what we look like at birth. In fact, that little groove above your lip called the philtrum is one indication that we descended from fish. Now go back to your embryonic state and swim on over to avsoul.net slash particle equalizer instead. It's an audio visualization that moves to the sound of anything you want. Beep boop bop bop ba dee boop boop. Bleep, 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 blah, 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 blah. If you just want to see it in a dark abyss, unselect this option and reselect. Whichever of these you have completed on Life Checklist, a web page that keeps your data so you can go back every time you finish something new. Finish middle school? A check. See the ocean? A check. A get kissed? Like I said, it saves your progress so you can come back to it, but in the meantime, head to Pixel Chart, which is a dong inspired by this Reddit post on Gaussian distribution. It takes pictures and breaks it down into thousands of particles. They are then arranged by color intensities on a histogram. Let's give it a go by selecting a random image. Whoa, that looks cool. Now let's slow it down or speed it up. The real cool part is, is right down here, so check that out. As you can see, the largest number of pixels fall into this color space. Looking at this histogram, we can see that it matches. Very few fall in the lightest and darkest ranges. Now that we're thinking about colors, let's play Shape Mania. The goal is to get the highest score possible, like a lot of games, but it's fun and addictive. Drag a dot to an empty star of the corresponding color and you will get one point. Keep doing this and when there is a row of filled in stars, they will empty and become new stars. Eventually you won't be able to make any more moves, but that's okay because we have internet slang because we're cool and hip. Swaggy, swag, swag, swag. So type in whatever you want, like hi is actually what up, cool. And that's great is that's great with an eight. And you know what else is great? The sponsor of this episode, the wonderful Brilliant.org. It's a site full of lessons and practice quizzes and math and science subjects. And now that we've constructed a neural network at the beginning of this dong, let's check out the lesson on artificial neural networks. How can a computer distinguish pictures of dogs and cats? Well, it might be closer to how humans do than you think. Let's go through a problem. When building a supervised learning model to distinguish whether an image is of a dog or a cat, what should the inputs of the examples be? Numerical data representing images of dogs and cats. Yes, we did it. Only 77% of people got it, which is a lot, but I'm still proud of us because we did it 
together. If you too want to be proud of all the questions you'll get right or the wrong ones you'll learn from, use the link in the description for 20% off an annual premium subscription. And this offer is only open for the first 36 dong gang dongers to click it. To, you know, just go down there, do that. Uh, that's all I got for you right now. I love you and respect you, and I am grateful for every moment we get to spend together. I hope you have a wonderful life. I hope that you are uh, as beautiful as you always were and are. And uh, long live the Empire. And as always, 